screen name. There, here's the agenda. Woo, three exciting bullet points. One, two, three. We're going to talk about chapters, we're going to talk about projects, we're going to talk about operational stuff. It's just okay, that easy. who doesn't know me? My name is Dawn Aiken. I'm a community manager. I've taken over chapters, what is it, about three months, four months now? I know who's Hey, look, it's like I made a slide for you. Oh, and you spelled my name right. Yeah, I can do this. So basically, a lot of people noticed lately who have been wanting to open chapters, we're trying to restructure everything. Uh, some chapters had to wait quite a bit and still waiting to open new ones. We have um, really worked in the United States region, is really cleaned up. I'm working on Europe. So there are some delays in opening new chapters because we're really trying to focus on the regions. And there is some game plan about trying to see how to make chapters, have members, and how to help promote them. Everyone who wants to open a chapter, any guidelines, has to have a conference call with me. We request, obviously, the chapter handbook. I, we will send out some updates in the next few months because we yep. will be updating things. And also, JIRA. You want to get paid, you need to know JIRA. <laughs> also, uh, so everyone needs to look on that. Do you have that up there? Uh, well, oh, I, no. did, I have chapter numbers, but actually, it's there. Yeah. Uh, reimbursements get paid twice a month. Uh, Mid-month, end of the month, the board has to approve, just sign off. Uh, the quicker your co-leader approves your JIRA request, the reimbursement request, the quicker you get paid. Okay, can so, I jump in for a half a second? Yeah. Yeah, just the process is um, you submit your thing, co-leader approves it, uh, it goes to accounting. accounting, right, to be paid, and then on the 15th and the 30th, they batch all those up, put them in a report for the board, the board goes, yay, merrily, go forth and conquer, and then they get paid. And they will get paid not the next day, they usually get paid, it takes because of banking, a few days. A couple of days, yeah. So, okay. lately, we're really caught up, everyone's around, and, you know, yeah, we're are good on that. Working um, good. Obviously, smaller chapters, the basics right now are, in order, any new chapter, in order to receive $500 seed fund, you must have two chapter leaders. Mm. Good one. No <laughs> one, I think this is what we'll say, no one can spend money that they don't have without approval. Common statement, not really. So basically, if you want to have an event and your budget doesn't have money, you need to have pre-approval. Pre pre Just because you ask doesn't guarantee it's going to be approved. So don't spend and book a venue that hasn't been approved by the foundation. Um, a lot of times now, I will get help from other chapters to help a chapter. We like to do a lot of things with students. We like to start doing stuff with the women in aspect. So we're trying to gear towards that. Also, I just want to do chapters. We have a lot. We are up to last I checked, two hundred and twenty chapters. Yes, that's. Yeah, I did, I did, I did yeah. the slides off order, my bad. Yeah. Oops, right there. We have 220 chapters. We do have a virtual chapter, if anyone's interested in doing completely. Uh, so right now, we've really cleaned up the United States working on Europe. Um, the other regions are starting to clean up. Some are not active. So uh, standard procedure is the wiki page must be up to date at all times. If you choose that you don't want to use the wiki to up to date, you have to have a meetup page. Mm -hmm which it, we can, Harold, will set up for you. Mm -hmm. But that link must be on the wiki page so some people can check to see where you're meeting to listen. Yeah. So um, a couple of our chapter leaders don't have access to the media. Like uh, when I, I have access to the media page, but when I go ahead and accept the organizer request, it asks me to pay. But then uh, my chapter leader has reached out to other people so that I can get access to it and I can set up uh, the meetups. So is your meetup through app, the foundation or is it your own chapter meetup? Foundation. So we can add how many administrators per? Is there a limit? I don't know if there is a limit. So email me. I don't expect a response until Monday or Tuesday when we get back. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll check. <laughs> email me with a list yes. of who needs to be administrators. Yes. Also, chapters are now three chapter leaders is the limit. Okay. If you want to name other people, treasurers, different things, but we only acknowledge three chapter leaders. Any more on the? No. 
A lot of people to join our meetup because you, the chapter doesn't have to pay the monthly fee. Harold is the one who sets up all the meetups for the chapters. So it's three chapter leaders. We set up the meetings. Jira, when I put that. Oh, also, a lot of people are setting up meetings that you need insurance for. Um, some of the venues request insurance. You would request that to me. I need at least 45 days, depending on the insurance, how quickly to get. It's a little harder to get an uh, ongoing certificate of insurance, so I would, it's easier to tell me in the basics if you're serving alcohol, what the date is and what the time, and the quest about approximately how many people are going to be at the meeting. Um, which one's it? Reasons, insurance. On the merchandise, as of last week, I got a whole bunch more photos. I will be putting that all up within the next three weeks, all the other merchandise we have stock. Uh, we need about a week just to know, depending when it gets sent, if it's Friday, I can't ship it out to Monday. We're going to start working on putting some merchandise that you can with a vendor in Europe, because the shipping cost for some stuff is so much money for you when I ship from the United States. So that, we're working on. Yeah, the stickers are up there now. We're talking to a vendor currently, and if yeah. that pans out, we'll have one in Europe, but we did not have to ship stuff across the Atlantic to get them to this side of the pond. If a chapter is new and they need help and funding, uh, just to start off meetings, we're more than willing to help send flyers and stuff. We will not be sending swags for your first meeting. We need, we're not going to send backpacks. We're not going to send T-shirts. We'll send you flyers. We'll bring you to the uh, wiki page for the branding. Now we have stickers up there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll promote it on Twitter account for you. We'll promote it on the Facebook. We'll, we'll send you the links to, we can do LinkedIn. What's the other one on LinkedIn? LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitter Facebook, Facebook, both group and page. Meetup. Meetup. Meetup, we can do that yeah. too, because currently what we're close to 10,000 on our meetup, the members, yeah. with all the different groups. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Harold, we're about 10,000 on meetup, approximately? I can give you the number. Okay. Just say approximately 10,000, yeah. plus or minus 10,000. <laughs> so the goal is to make the chapter successful the best way we can. Communication, uh, if you let me know, we can post blogs about an upcoming event you have, we can tweet about it, promote, help you promote it. Uh, the goal is to make all chapters um, successful and I'm blanking out here, sorry. <laughs> so we have so many regents, three chapter leaders, yep. self-sufficient we want the chapters to be. So I'm now trying to clean things up and like we said, we're gonna put the merchandise on, we're gonna find uh, stickers and different things that you can get locally so you don't have to waste expense to bring to the meeting. Flies are always available. Yep. Oh, one thing we probably should say because we were talking about this the other day is if you have like, if you know somebody in, I don't know, where am I? I'm in England, if you know somebody in Poland, wants to start a chapter, that's awesome, let us know about it, but we're gonna reach out to that person. Like, you know, send Don an email, says, hey Don, there's this guy named so-and-so in Poland, and he and somebody else are gonna start a chapter, and Don can reach out to them and handle that. So this, or someone, you know, that you know who's interested, mm -hmm. let Don know, and we'll reach out to them and make yeah, sure Yeah, I usually do is set up, oh, always set up a conference call with the uh, attending chapter leaders, and go mm -hmm. through the whole process. For the record, the- Question, by the way. Oh, sorry. How long does that take to send I've sent event, like some new chapter requests and then some of them have been writing me they're like, you know, it's been this many months. It, right now it, it has right been now. months because okay. we're starting from scratch cleaning okay. things up. Now I completed the United States and working on Europe, then I had asked that. So it okay. wasn't fair to start. So when I get back in the next week or so, I have calls scheduled again. Oh good. Also we're gonna go review and when we start to fit figure the different regions, we have to also say, everything is not guaranteed just because you request it, because I might have something very close. Mm -hmm. I know at one point we had a local chapter, four different people requested to start the chapter. Mm -hmm. And none of them wanted to work with each other. Oh, really? So, okay. that's nice. it's yeah. uh, <laughs> first email I opened, kind of is the person I set up the call with, who we'll all have the different people. So we are backed up a little, because I've just taken it over, mm -hmm. but, we're working our way through. Cool, good. Any other questions? I know it's all coming down. That's not good. Okay. Um, Sharon, any input? Well, I think what we reckon, maybe I'm jumping ahead of you, five. No, do, do whatever. No, it's we're like, kind of, yeah. We're pretty laid back here, man. 
I, I just think that what we've recognized is that, you know, the community is, is hugely, hugely important. And that um, chapters are the foundational elements that force the community up towards the foundation. And there's probably a gap in our engagement levels. Um, and how do we as your team support you, but yet maintain the guidelines of the foundation and ensure equitable support and distribution uh, amongst all community members and chapters? And that's been a little bit of a challenge. And I think Matt will show you some charts of what it looks like. So um, we're, we're very fluid with the chapter process. We want the community to be a part of it. We want to understand more, or at least I know I do and Matt does, what, what do the chapters look like? How do they function? Um, there's a huge uh, you know, variation amongst different levels of activity amongst chapters. And so what Dawn did was the basics. First, we had to clean it up. There were so many uh, variations on how we treated chapters and funded chapters and managed chapters. And now we want to start back to the basics with the understanding that you guys are everything for this foundation. And if it weren't for you having your meetings and pulling these people in, we wouldn't all be sitting here together today. So um, bear with us, be patient, um, and, and guide us. Guide us. Because you know what you need, and we don't know what we don't know. So um, Matt will share with you a little bit more. We're trying to understand who you are and then find out the best way to serve the different types of chapters that we have out there to ensure that we are also, you know, always bringing us closer together as one global foundational unit. So I did some surveys. Sorry, just one second. We did, like, we started to realize, I think we were at, like, anywhere from 23 to 25% of our chapter leaders and members. That's it. We started to realize certain chapters have less than 10 me members. Mm -hmm. They might have a list of 1,200 people, only 10 members are OWASP members. So that kind of stuff we're gearing towards to start researching and figure out, you know, our game yeah, How do we incentivize to, that to, yeah, to make membership more interesting to chapter members, fluid and chapter members, to actually become member members? Um, some of the chapters, um, I've seen have a problem where someone is the leader or there's a group of people that are leaders and they don't want to hold meetings unless it has to do with their company or product or they just like aren't active anymore but they won't let someone else take that over that chapter. Anyone who doesn't have an active chapter or there's so issues, they need to bring it to us mm -hmm. and we go from there and there's yeah. stages, then we contact them because I'm also looking at their requirements for so many meetings a year. Mm -hmm. And if you see, when I did United States and Europe, there were a lot of chapters who've become inactive. Yeah. And I've gotten a lot of emails from chapter leaders because if, if you're a chapter leader, you're not a member. You lose your OWASP email address, you're taken off the calendar, yeah. you're taken off certain lists. Then they're like, oh no, we're active. Well, it's not on here. Yeah. So then, you know, then the communication starts again. So we go from there. It's so I have a few people say, okay, I'll fix everything. If someone's been a chapter leader for like a really, really, really long time, um, so some chapters, that's the case, and they won't let anyone else be a leader. And like, this is my empire. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, well, I mean, if that was the case, that's, that's a perfect on. use for the governance committee, which they're going to talk about in the board meeting, or maybe you've talked about already. I don't know. I think there was a board meeting that happened earlier. I just think maybe but like check in with those chapters. Like, our chapter's really happy, but I know other chapters. Sure. But yeah. they have to also let me know, because I know. Yeah. yeah. We have some board members in here, like Martin, who can chime in, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess it's hard yeah. if you're like this young person who's like, I really want to be involved, and then the people at that chapter level are just like, no. Isn't me, David? Yeah. Sorry, I'm talking. Um, we have this problem in general. Like, always is a don't ask but do organization. And we have people like claiming a chapter, mm -hmm. either being not active or whatever they do, and then start falling onto this decision or saying, you're allowed to do my chapter if you do this. Mm -hmm. There's a different understanding even in the global organization on what is not appropriate, what is beneficial, and how to act as we have people who <laughs> call themselves chapter presidents or whatever chapter vice presidents or we have chapter leaders and you are supposed to do stuff. Chapter leader is not an, a role where you can have benefits. That's the idea, but you have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you don't uh, live up to the responsibilities and somebody else will step in, we have no formal process for that, and luckily we have very few cases seen in the size of our community, mm -hmm. but we have to support them or think about the guidelines, and this is something what I always say, always uh, board responsibility is 
to help you to create the rules so everybody can play the game nicely. Mm -hmm. Because we have transparent and education. If there's a okay. problem with that and the uh, guidelines is broken or not sufficient, we have to update them mm -hmm. together with the community. It's not that we are ruling this, we are trying to create mm -hmm. for you the guidelines so you can play the game. But this is happening over the years. Mm -hmm. Now and then, like one or two cases, I think, in every two or three years. Um, the question would be, do we require an official procedure for that? And if somebody has it's not access, Dawn is just taking this up and is doing yeah. a video job to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. And if they're not responsive, then I think that's the worst thing that yeah. can. So we get some yeah. uh, suggestions. Like I don't, some people don't daily or multiple times they check their own email. Uh, so we have a time, I think a month, they have time to. Yeah, they have, you know. uh, if for some, the chapter has not been active in, the, say, five months when I do the audits, and the audits will end up being twice a year, mm -hmm. I send her out a red flag. Now, when I started this, some of these chapters have not been updated on the pages for two years. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are shut down. And then I send them the email that you owe us, you know, the whole bit, the whole, you know, it's gonna be deactivated. Mm -hmm. But also, if it comes up, like you were just saying, they can reach out to me, and if they weren't really involved, we can reach out to those chapters to see, and they can also help a project. There's so much yeah. you can volunteer for mm -hmm. if you're finding there's a personality situation. Mm -hmm. So there's so much to do here. But I think you see already a huge shift for the foundation. I mean, 206 chapters, it's two people now. Mm -hmm. Dawn says the dirty work, she's good at it. She peruses What's all the requests, she cleans them <laughs> up. And that, you know, Matt's gonna work on the community and the relationship and the engagement level and the services. And the two of them are a great combination. So you get your truck paid, you get your budgets up to date, and then we also find better ways to talk to engage, make mm -hmm. things easier for you to be successful. Because no need to create a chapter if we don't want it to be great, right? Mm -hmm. We want it to be great, we want to find out how to do that, and you are the best at helping us to understand what that means. Well, I, I can relate, sorry with that. Um, I know in the past we had an initiative about uh, chapter mentors, right? So yeah. successful, mm -hmm. long-time chapter leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Helping new chapter leaders, how to get speakers, how to get funding, how to get whatever. What are, how do I operate? How do, how do we do whatever? And I think that was a great initiative. Of course, that was not a long list, but that, that might be something we can look into. It, it, it's funny you say that because I've already talked to a couple chapter leaders that I know were good and active, and said, "Hey, after PE was done and I can breathe again, um, I want to." Funny what they're saying. No. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I want to to reach out to them and get like a lessons learned, what worked for you, and get sort of an a la carte menu of like, these are things that work for chapters. Because the other thing that's really interesting about chapters is you have chapters that are like three people in Omaha, and that's like the three people that are security people in that community, period, <laughs> right? And then you have like, you know, New York or London that has a large body of people, right? So it's also, I don't want to just say the only way to do it is like a New York, London model when you're a small group or a big chapter or a little chapter. So and the local dependency, so it's different we do it in the US and Europe, yeah. Europe, the North and South Europe. And so and Germany, Asia, Germany is kind of a, a different thing with the Stammtisch, if I'm saying it right, which I'm probably not, mm -hmm. because I'm American. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so but like. It's very local, it's depending on the area. And so I, I like the idea of gathering like these things worked and you can pick from them what makes sense for your yeah. chapter. I don't want to say you must do A or B or C, but here's like a big menu and what do you want, order it. Yeah, here, here to enable. Yeah. And I did receive, Sam sent me today because he has a, a video that he uses in his area that I got for us to go over next week. Oh, cool. Oh, you know, within the next week to, then, then we're going to discuss and maybe set up for the meeting with him. We did talk about, I don't know what month we're going to start, we're going to go back to... Um, having at least monthly chapter leader meetings, like tw different time zones, obviously, so I can get feedback, but I need to clean up a little more, mm -hmm. so I know what I'm working with, and yeah. then, and Matt's back, so we can, we have to figure out the times on that one. Welcome back. Yeah, so it's good to be back. It's good cop, <laughs> bad cop, and you're actually a good cop. Yes. I don't know, I'm like second tier escalations when they're really ugly and hairy. <laughs> My new work in 2008 okay. from, Cap from Canada, no. Oh, I need to do that first. No, I have to do that. <laughs> well, we do really need to, like, getting our, st our stuff in order yeah. uh, is a good thing. And very important, because it's hard for us to serve you when we're stumbling over systems that aren't working for us internally. If I may just say that for uh, you guys, I know that a lot of special leaders and project leaders are frustrated. They send an email, and they're like, hey, nobody will buy to me today or next week. And to give, a, a, I think, understanding what they're dealing with, as we said, 206 chapters, how many projects do we have? 200? 
220. Sorry? 220. 220. Yeah. And that's only the active ones, and they have the started <laughs> chapters, and everything they're organized in local chapters, so they get flooded by email. So but if your email doesn't get replied the next day, it doesn't mean it's not been written. So we are active, and they have a lot of job, uh, big jobs for the update new conference. So when you, uh, a email is an asynchronous communication, so you send an email and it will be written and you get a reply, but maybe not the next day. Please be aware of that too, that they have a lot of people to handle for, and I think they do a great job doing so. And it is a little harder right now, because we I just started to clean up, and I did get two regions, but I can't really open chapters in regions that I haven't researched and done that way. And we're, then not even sure, we're not even sure if that chapter that is there that we're telling you you can't have because there is one is actually is one or yeah. isn't one or uh, like yeah it, it, we'd like to be able to answer you accurately which would be good well, let me chime in uh, on Martin said uh, I think nobody's um, questioning the hard work you put into this I think it's just extremely challenging to like supervise 200 chapters I mean I, I do not really see how it could possibly work smoothly. Uh, well, they can tell you anything about their chapter somewhere in the world and you need to believe them in the end. Well, yeah. what happens yeah. now, I find that things are running smoothly is that when we follow the guidelines. So now I have like you guys, I know on each chapter, everyone has posted on the wiki a meeting mm -hmm. within so much time. I know that if they didn't, they no longer have an OWASP email address yeah, as before. If you're not a member, your email address is gone. Things that you've had, I, I'll, that you're not yeah. supposed to have if you don't do A, are now really being taken back. And then people are saying, okay, I want that. I want yeah. that OWASP email address, I want that. And then, like Harold, we have the meetup, more people involved. So yeah, it is a lot, but once we get everyone on the same page, then it's red flags when it's not happening. And the, the other thing to mention here too is that things like Meetup, the Meetup Pro in particular, has an API, and we can do some interesting stuff that I'll talk about in a couple slides. But we can also, once we get things settled and, and we have sort of audited and cleaned up the books, we can do, go and say, look, whatever, if we, we could pull the API and say, for this chapter, has it had a meeting in X period of time, it hasn't, flag it. And we're not manually clicky clicky, mm -hmm. we're letting the API tell us, right? And those kind of automation things can happen once we have clean data. We do it now, it's <laughs> like meeting data. Because yeah. we look at now, like, we're trying to, with insurance, someone needs a, a certificate of insurance because they want the venue. There's going to be now set up that this is who you contact, this is how many days before, and if I could get the, you know, the chat leads and different people to follow those guidelines, things can be, I can't get you a certificate of insurance to, tomorrow. No. It just does, it's not going to happen, so even if I want to. Requests. I do, those all the time. The things that suck us in. And then sure. we can't get to you guys, you're going six months from now, I need one. So yeah, I think thing. what Dawn's trying to say is we're going to go back to the basic guidelines that we've already established. We're not changing anything. We're going to review good, how they work. Makes a lot of sense. And then we'll come yeah. back to you and say these guidelines don't function well with who we are today. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about a change? Yeah. And, and you'll hear some complaints because we're going to start, you know, structuring the way chapters operate again and stick to the guidelines. So you will hear some people probably say things that are not so positive because they're not used to having some guidelines. But it's only fair and equitable and yeah. right that everybody adhere to the same rules. And then, and then we can string together is what Dawn's saying. And then we know how, you know, how to string together. I think it's still fair for those people who you know the short startup and being the agile small company and you just got more material. In the past, you just call the other guy and say, do this or do that. And now we need a so big that we need a process of issue. It's fair. Yeah, to, to, your, point, to your point, to your point earlier, I was curious what I was doing in the deck last night, and I did the math. And so if Dawn only worked on chapters, and she does way more than chapters, and divided her time equally amongst those chapters, you gotta step out of the way. You're, you're blocking my transition, man. I worked hours on this. <laughs> Eleven minutes per week she'd have for your chapter. So it, it just that it just it was I was wondering because I was like, dang, I didn't realize there was that many. So yeah, it's it's <laughs> We're trying to we're trying to make things with the least amount of variation so we can handle them quickly and promptly and automate it and do what we can. But with the with the snowflakiness and the not so awesome data right now, it's hard to get there. But we are we are we through are the US, we're mostly through Europe and then we knock the rest out. Yeah, and we are moving like for me two weeks ago, three weeks ago, if I was under two hundred emails a day, I was do doing a happy dance. I'm down to now hundred emails a day, I'm doing a last week I was down to twenty. I was 20. very happy. Like that, I haven't seen in a while. 
We don't talk about it. <laughs> so why we found this uh, offline communication method? Like emails, like stuff is limited number, right? Maybe some volunteer knows about the uh, question the you know number is asking or the chat user is asking. So they can ask. So we can use Discord. If we have a for, you know Discord community side, yeah. and if yep. we have uh, this uh, chat or section or something, anyone can answer there. They don't have to wait there. Stop it. Beautiful, beautiful thing, and you're about three slides ahead. Okay. Yeah, but that is exactly what, yes. Because there's some of these things that we don't have to answer, and I'd much rather yes. put them in a more public forum. Also, and it's like a duplicate answer, so yeah. many people will ask for the same thing. Well, you know the problem, people don't read the FAQ. <laughs> well, but if they are in discourse, and it's crawled by Google, Google can at least index it. Yes. And about like, OWASP chapter, how do I, and the proof. Most of my questions or um, activities that have to be done, opening chats, is insurance, Different, a lot of stuff, getting reimbursed for money, checking things like that, that the community doesn't really have yeah, you're to much more, her, her job is much more Yeah, like a lot of the stuff like OWASP email addresses have been passed on to someone else, and the IT stuff, Harold's been doing some glitches on that that he's working through. But a lot of the questions I'm doing, are I'm putting out fires. And the more I streamline things, the less fires I have to put out because it's standard procedure. And some of these things I thought would work, don't work. Some of the things that people suggested, I have some community members that said, why don't we try this, and it's working. Worked great. Yeah. So I can't, like Karen said, we can't make a judgment until I clean up the rest. And I do have some, I talked to Martin, I think it was Owen, and I said there were some regions I really don't know anything about. And I don't know, like I know New York. Like everyone's saying Brooklyn technically is what, eight miles away. Well, it's still a totally different community. So I don't know in India or in certain regions how far anyone is, yeah. different things. So I can't make a judgment call. So I said Martin's going to help me and other people are going to help me. So we need to like, and once we figure all that out, we can also gear towards um, getting these communities to work together. Because at times Brooklyn works with New York City, Long Island does an event together. So if we have these little groups, I can pair them off with a bigger group. But I'm not, I'll be honest, I'm not there yet. I don't have that knowledge yet yep. in certain regions, and I'm not going to say that I do. It's a long process, but mm -hmm. I really there. do feel very strongly about this that we are moving forward. As crazy as for everyone in the wait period isn't the greatest, we've cleaned up so much in the last three months, and the change with this venue and everything, and to get out everything, I think we're doing pretty good. That's my be. personal opinion, but what's the next slide? Uh, that was it for your stuff. Any questions for me? I didn't want to hold you from registration for too long if you needed to be down. I have there. a few questions. Actually. Sure. Um, so my we'll stuff is on camera. Camera. Yes. The, the one in Ghana. Yes. Uh, you mentioned this five hundred dollar thing. If you have two leaders, well, we have two leaders. How do we apply for it, and what can we do? You've already been assigned it. Okay. I send once you. I I get the second leader. I send a memo to accounting, and say I send it June fifth. It will be put in the July budget. I have the donation scorecard, scoreboard numbers. I'll get posted for the morning because they just sent it to me and I wasn't oh replying. Oh, um, all numbers on the chapter section on the donation scoreboard list on the bottom are 30 days behind because accounting needs 30 days to close their books. Once I clean up the rest of the regions, we'll go back to the individual chapter transaction reports, but I don't want to post something till I have surveyed that region that the numbers are actually correct. So yours was done two weeks ago, so you, if you didn't hit, you have $500 in your budget. And we can use that for what? Meetings. In the chapter handbook, there's a list of sort of pre-approved or known expenses. Any of those, <laughs> or just go do them and let us know. Um, do and you if know you're doing where the handbook is? Have you ever looked at it? Yes. Yes, actually. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Good. Thank you for asking that. Another question. that you mentioned posting the percentages and that that's happening in Europe. Uh, unfortunately, not much stuff arrives in Ryan. I right. usually get a few <coughs> So, is there any way, like, I quite hop between there and London or somewhere else? You can, do, you can get a local vendor for yourself, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so or you could do that, yeah. Or yeah. If, if, if you come to London a lot, talk to the London chapter. I'm well, sure they would hold your stuff for a little bit, right? You got two of them right here. They and if you have a, someone by you, like, I had a chapter recently. Some chapters make their own chapter logo, but it has to be approved by Karen. So if you want to make a look, someone did it, it's orange. It's not, I forget what's the name. I'm up to the world, it's kind of orange. Is it Florida? I forget who did that. Yeah. Someone recently did it. 
that has to be approved by Karen. But yes, you can get a vendor by you if it's cheaper, because it is going to cost me. I yeah, can't get fine. around that. Because yeah. a lot of people have been trying to order the cornucopia cards. They're 750 bucks. Shipping to them is $45. Like we, there's nothing I yeah. can do about that. <coughs> so yes, you can do that. Say you go and order 100 t-shirts. You get the receipt, submit it through JIRA. I get a second chapter leader to approve it. You get paid within the next pay run. Uh, I've got two quick ones. Sure. Uh, Getting, uh, is there a guideline for uh, getting a sponsorship or contacting venues or online comments? Are there like boiler plate tips that you can use to approach people? Or oh, I don't know of any of that existing, but I've never run a chapter, so I've never looked for it. Um, probably not. Um, it, uh, but ping me afterwards, and I, I, we can, if nothing else, we can shake some big chapters and, and find out if that exists. All right, another thing, a membership. Uh, well, I think they always touch on this in Africa. While it's all fit and good for everyone to chip in fifty dollars, uh, your region, I believe, is Ghana twenty dollars. Uh, yeah, like I said, two, two weeks of a pay fifty dollars. Yeah, and also in, when it comes to the payments, it, it is going to become a big challenge in terms of making online payments. So oh. are there alternatives where you go? Yeah, because the re uh, PayPal does not take certain regions anymore. Yeah. 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 Talk to me. <laughs> email me. I'm gonna have to ask the accounting on that one. They're like M Pesa. Did you do M Pesa there? Is that a thing? No, okay. that was Kenya. No. That was Kenya. Well, I know it's yeah. in some parts of Africa. Yeah. I mean, hey, I know Africa exists in America. Yeah. I'm ahead of most of us. <laughs> no, the um, M Pesa, the mobile payment. No, yeah. that's Visa. Is what? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a cryptocurrency behind that. Ah, so okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think it was Andrew Stock a while back got a motion approved to have the. Um, the, the membership sort of by region. Yes. Uh, yeah. They were trying, the, the idea is to, I'm from Egypt as well, as for example, it's the same thing. Like if you tell somebody it's $50 or 60, you might as well be telling them $600 a year or so forth. Um, and That's so already idea. set up. Yeah. There are certain, when you go to register, it asks you what region you are. You want to say Asia Pacific, there's another one that is only $20 a year. Um, no, but at twenty dollars, it's still a small portion. But we were, uh, we've been talking. I know Don and I both been talking to a couple board members about doing something like uh, the, the Economist produces something called the Big Mac Index mm -hmm. and attaching that to the pricing. I would really yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But we also have to. You can't totally eliminate everyone down to a certain point either, because you have to. Yeah. We have to be yeah. realistic too, because reality is we only have twenty five hundred paid members out of thousands and thousands of people who come to our meetings. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we have to look at. Why w don't we have paid members? Why are people not joining yeah. our organization? Because yep. we could have it just San Jose, it'll be a thousand people. And that, and then out of our members, but our membership is only 2,500. And there's, that's a big difference. Because yeah. your chapter could have 100 people. How many well, are members? We have 850 meetup members, and we only have 14. Right. Yeah. Six, 16 paid members and then one yeah. of them. And that's yeah. very common. And that's yeah, something. It's unusual. It's because they don't get absolutely anything whatsoever for becoming a member except for a high five from every one of the chapter leaders. Yeah, that's that's, it. Something that's the we're, only We're benefit. very aware of the fact that they yeah. do not have to Because it's also something. <laughs> My high five is really high quality. Yeah. <laughs> but we also, because <laughs> open, we also give, like like you look here, chapter lead gets yeah. to come to the meeting for free, gets yep. Get to all this okay. different stuff that other organizations might not do. Oh, yeah. So that's something Oops. above me. Being that's going to be the awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something the board and Cameron would decide on that. Yeah, we're trying to find ways to, to, to do both a uh, find more incentives and value for being a member, right? And yeah. then and in, in list it down so that we can uh, the chapter leaders can circulate among the team and we can have some flyers when we have monthly meetings. Yep. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have the membership flyer. It's on the wiki. If you don't want to have them shipped, you can do that locally. Yeah, download and print it. Paint those yeah. or whatever those ones are. Yeah. Sharif, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? No, no, but um, Matt uh, correctly uh, mentioned getting it to a right, a right level where, for example, if it's by region, you still have, for example, a country like Cambodia versus a country like Singapore, and their GDP are wildly Radically different. different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that what they can afford, those two places can afford 
a completely different as well. Yep. So something like the MAC index, so if you take, for example, the ratio of GDP between the, the membership in the US and the GDP of the US, and then get that ratio, and then you just basically figure out what the ratio of the costs are for each. And country. calculate that once a year, and then yeah. set up the registration system and go, or the membership system and go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, before you head out, um, as a, a project colleague, what is really difficult with all the head water is you're a bunch of people, and there is a lot of movement in this, especially the last 12 months, and yeah. some contacts, oh, it's in all the worst yeah. And it's hard to really understand what is the right person to approach for a given project. I mean, once you stabilize, I think things will sort itself out. But, but right now, it's hard. Yeah. So it's totally exactly, yeah. And I'm sure I'm always at the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> so basically what we find now is any of the cases put in, 90% membership still goes to Kelly. Everything else, I get pinged every time and IT goes to Harold, I think, yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, projects. Uh -huh. But basically putting a case and address it to me. Put it on general and it'll come to me and I'll find the person. So pretty much Kelly can tell you any person. Kelly knows more than I do or anything. But me or Kelly can tell you who the right person is okay. if, and redirect if you, that to the right if you can. <laughs> if you don't know who that right yeah. person is right now. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Follow-up question, who's in charge of the Twitter account? So for Twitter account is Karen technically. Which one? All right. There's like 12 of them. Okay, let, let's say the OS <laughs> The OS account. one, yeah. That's yep. mostly me and Karen. You and Karen. Yep. Good to know. Thank you. Yep. But I do want to say going forward, once we get the, all the chapters cleaned up, I'm going to have chapters uh, send me directly, and I will post for them on the Twitter account, Facebook, and so on. Yep. So then it's one person per chapter. Okay. Yep. So there was something that I've been trying to do for a very long time, which is to get our speakers to log into yeah. maybe the OS log or something. Yep. That also lets my peers and chapter leads just think mm -hmm. about that if they have an interesting talk. They can do a really deep technical one. They can put it on the blog, and it's mutual interest. They'll get known, and they'll have it published on OWASP, and at the same time, we'll have interesting content that will be useful. Yeah, that, we've, we have not told anybody no who gave us yeah. content. I mean, I would absolutely take it right now today, no questions asked. And, and another thing to what you were saying is the other thing I'm, we're trying to do, and we haven't, because we were small and scrappy, and it, like you just knew, you may email Kate for anything, or Allison for accounting, but they're both gone, and what do you do? We're trying to start also putting sort of, uh, like subject area email addresses to things. So if there is a reimbursements, we make a reimbursements at OWASP, and then we can set as a Google group who that goes to. You don't need to know under the covers yeah. that it's our email yeah. list. And that's so we do that for yeah. the treasurer. The so treasurer of the board is now as a good treasurer response at OWASP. to my question. Yeah. 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 And the other thing is we're, we're looking at the cases because I've, I've never liked how the Salesforce cases work because once you submit that, unless we email you back, there's no way you for know what's going on with that. Like, I have to push to you any kind of notification. You can't go back and look at the queue. Yeah. So Harold and I have been investigating ways to replace that with a system to give the submitters much better visibility. Because as staff, I, I can see everything, but you guys can't. Yeah. And you would know, oh, oh crap, Dawn has 400 things in her chapter queue. I just submitted 401. It's going to be a while. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you don't know that right now because you're the only one, as far as you know, when you submit <laughs> in the normal case sure. for now. Yeah. So that, that kind of feedback loop we're trying to get in place. It should help both of them. Thank you. Anyone else? Last chance. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to chat for a wee little bit, then I'm going to hand it over to Harold, and then if we have time, I may chat for a wee little bit more. Um, oh. So, yeah, my point is that if you haven't figured out the foundation staff is pretty thin, there's all of six of us. FTEs. Um, so what we really ask of you is just a little bit of patience. We're really working hard to get the systems nailed down and straightened out and audited and cleaned up because like you mentioned, there's been a little bit of chaos and we just have to clean up from the chaos and we'll be good. Um, so please give us a bit of patience. And number two, like allow us to simplify things. Right now, um, when, when I was paying invoices last fall, I would get an email that says, hey, I need you to pay this invoice. And it could be in Meetup Pro any one of the individual chapter meetups, it might be an Eventbrite, Eventbrite, or Eventbrite, and that's not a typo. I know of four different Eventbrite accounts that I might have to go log in and pay. Um, and then there's Doorkeeper 2 for the chapters in Japan. So like when I have to go pay an invoice, I have to go figure out which of these things it is sometimes. 
So we're trying to like whittle these things down to systems that solve 80 to 95% of the problems and then use them all over the place. So that I don't have to fish through 10 different things to find what it is. And like CFPs can be an easy chair or a submittable or open CFP or uh, papercall.io and if I need to help you with that, like I only know one or two of those a bit. <laughs> I don't know the other one at all. And so I might not even log into it. So we're trying to like figure out systems where we can have like the thing that you do is here and it's gonna solve your problems. And if, you, if we need to talk and figure out an exception, that's fine, but I'd rather 90% of the people use the norm. And if we have exceptions, we'll figure out how to handle them, right? Maybe the system isn't right, who knows? And as we start to make these choices, I'm gonna be very vocal about this is what I'm thinking. Tell me if this won't work for you. Otherwise, we're going forward. Because this was nuts. When, I, when Kate left and I started paying the bills, it was insane. Because <laughs> they're like, hey, they paid it on Eventbrite. I'm like, I looked at Eventbrite, it's all paid. No, not that Eventbrite, the other Eventbrite. I'm like, there's another Eventbrite? Oh my goodness, and I signed another Eventbrite. And what happens? So it's paid too. No, it's not that one anymore, it's the other Eventbrite. So, yeah, so this just has to be cleaned up. Um, so that's what we need a little bit of patience for. Um, oh, other things we're wanting to do is revive the chapters and projects committees that used to exist and then died and I think need to come back. Because I think we lost a really good uh, feedback loop from the members that are out there doing things for OWASP, right? The projects committee and the chapters committee in particular, those are our active people in their membership. We need to have a way for them to tell us things that's more effective, right? So get a committee going and if as a chapter you have a problem, you can ask, talk to the chapter committee and if they need to have the foundation do something, they can talk to us, right? It's a way, for, and if they've already handled it, they can just tell the chapter, oh, by the way, this is what you do. Because a bunch of people that are in a chapters committee probably know chapters much better than me, I've never run one. So why not have that committee kind of handle those things, provide feedback and all that. Um, and then, this is very early days for me, but I'm trying to figure out ways to handle maturity levels and incentives for chapters. And I, I had this is very soft and squishy in my head. I have no hard, fast rules, I'm thinking about this. Um, but there's really no distinction between chapters. Like I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm picking on Omaha, and I don't know if that was it before. A small rural part of the U.S. that I can't remember came and talked to me and they said, we literally have seven people that meet once a month and is it okay if we're also OWASP and ISSA and ISACA because like we're the seven people in this small area that care about security and I'm like, you know what, if you meet the minimum rules for chapters, I don't really care, that's fine, right? We got minimum rules, you do that, you want to commingle with other groups, like whatever, we're, we're friendly. But that's no different than New York or London that are big chapters and do lots of stuff and have tons of members. So. We need to figure out a way to understand the measurements and the metrics around chapters. And I don't know that we collect or have that now, but I want to start collecting and having that. So we can make distinctions between what types of chapters we want. And this isn't good or bad. This is like big, small maybe, or you know, active or inactive or something like that. It's not necessarily a, a judgment. It's more of a understand what kind of chapter you are. Um, we're trying to figure out ways to, to provide incentives so you can mature. Like, hey, maybe if you get 10% of your people our actual members that attend, maybe we give you, you know, a slip you a little bit extra more in your budget or send you 100 t-shirts or who knows what, right? Something like that. Some kind of incentive like, hey, if you can help us, we can help you. Um, and figure out a way to help great chapters get recognized and to take that information. This is kind of what I was talking about later or earlier about talking to active chapters that are successful and say, what are you guys doing that works? So we can put that in a sort of a some sort of consumable format for new chapters so they can go and say, hey, this is a menu of things that chapters have tried and they worked, or these are things we tried and didn't work, and let them have a little bit of sort of shared knowledge of the community before they, particularly for new chapters who are just kind of wide-eyed deer and headlight, like, what do I do, right? Oh, and I talked a little bit about this Meetup Pro. Um, so the OWASP Foundation has a Meetup Pro. We handle billing. I would love it if everybody was just there and we just paid one bill. We're not there yet, but we'll get there. We're close. Harold has done a lot of migration, which is fantastic. We also had somebody create a MediaWiki extension that if you add a simple tag in your wiki, it will take your stuff in our Meetup Pro and post it automatically to your wiki page. Done. Okay, is your wiki? Chapter. Yeah. Well, I have an example. <laughs> Got it right here. Um, the Ottawa chapter does that. And if you, let me see if it'll let me see if this is broken. Here's my pointy. Live demo. <laughs> <laughs> Live demo. So here's the auto chapter. And then if you go down a bit. You scroll down a bit. What part is auto generated? I don't know. This all looks like normal media wiki. Oh wait, yeah. this chapter meetings is auto generated by the plugin. Mm -hmm. 
And this is auto generated by. It's just one tag. We don't have to do anything. Yeah. This is all generated by. Uh, Where's that little tag? Lay, lay down. This um, tag. No, lay down. no, 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 lower, lower. Meet up group. No, no, that's to join our meetup, isn't it? If you go lower. Oh, no, that's it. That's it. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, the no, tag. Oh yeah, no, it is. <laughs> that's it, and you're auto posting to the wiki. That oh, that I that requirement of you to do as a chapter leader. <laughs> done. Added another chapter. Right, yay. Yeah. So these are the kind of things we're looking to do where we can, if we have consistency, we can automate. I can't automate 100,000 snowflakes, but I can automate 200 of the same thing, really. So that's, a, that's an awesome, cool win. And I don't think a lot of people know about that. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it. Thank you. Yeah, well, we had a volunteer make that for us, so it's awesome if yeah. everyone uses it. Yeah, we chucked it up to a volunteer, and then boom, done. Um, oh. Oh yes, this is very early days where Harold and I are trying to work on figuring out a way that chapters can work with projects and projects can work with chapters. So if you happen to have a project leader that's near a chapter or a chapter wants to have some students in their area that could help on a something, how can we connect the people that have the you know physical closeness to projects that may not have that physical closeness? And if you have any ideas, we want to hear it. I, I, I can't get enough feedback, both positive and negative. I mean, feedback is great. Thank you. Just to jump in, yep. I mean, when we say we want to clean up, that also means we want to get back to the foundational elements that made OWASP so great. Yeah. And that's projects and education and community, right? And those three things come hand in hand. You can't have projects without community. You can't have community without chapters. You can't have projects, community doing well without education and learning. So we're trying to find a way to bring all those elements together. And so we just briefly chatted how cool it would be to bring certain project summits to regions, uh, to regional events, whether it's a Snoke Rock or a LASCON, um, and, and find a relationship between the chapter, the people working on the project, and the project in general, and also bring maybe people in to learn more. So I think it'd be a very cool thing to do. Um, so we'd love your input on that. And see if there, you know, if we can find some traction and some success with that, it, it would, I think it would be super sweet. But, you know, it might be trial and error. This is a fluid uh, next 12 months as we find our way together and redeveloping our relationship and uh, how we engage with the community and with each other. It's almost like you want a chapter links to their local university, it's linked to local projects, and it's cross, it's cross reference. Taking it just the next. Vice versa, students are a resource that can be used Huge in for projects. projects. And I know um, I've had some uh, conversations with Sharif and Sam uh, about moving that forward. It's something we'll, we'll probably carry on after aspects over. Internships, we would love some. <laughs> We're using Matt's daughter right now. Yeah, my daughter is an intern. Um, yeah. <laughs> but internships, yeah, any kind of bump of project need, creative thinking, new ways of seeing things. And that, that all filters into that one word diversity. That's not about you know where you're from or what your sexual orientation is. It's about being different, you know, coming from a different point of view. Um, I just ran a financial advisory board for Canada to help them actually build out AppSec as part of the high school program. Oh, cool. um, so I'm going to ask for advice from a lot of people. So thank you for that. I have two kids in a STEM school that have a cyber patriots thing, so I'm doing lots for STEM. Cool. Odd reason. Cool. <laughs> yes. I think uh, it's very good incentive, but uh, if somehow we can get a list of the skill sets we need to have in take part in this project, 
Ooh. I can be constantly get up. That was super useful because like you mentioned earlier, uh, not all is developers and I want to take on documentation. But if I know pair project, who do you need right now? Do you need someone to yeah. sit down right now? Or do you need yeah. someone to know uh, how to do JavaScript? So if you can define that and then we can use some sort of tool chain yeah. and let's get them to get a list of projects, then I can communicate as a leader, I can just send out to my guys, hey guys, this thing is coming out, who wants to get involved? Do you know this and this and this? So you tick the box and go ahead. Right. Yep, that's awesome. One of, one of the systems we're looking at that did make the deck is a volunteer management system that would tie into our CRM. And those are the kind of things you can flag in there. Like this project has these kind of things. And then you can put a, a dynamic board that says, I know this. And it would say, well, these seven projects need CSS or whatever it is. Yep. But the reverse is true. And I know how working on classifying projects in certain categories. So if you want to use a project, you know where to go and look. You don't have to look through everything and try and figure out, is this the one that I want for whatever I'm working on, for whatever application you're in? And so the reverse is true, too. You know? And then we can kind of, I, I see a dashboard that shows you which projects and what color they are, whether they're an incubator or flagship, and they get brighter and stronger as they grow. Yeah, and then we could probably even do a dashboard that would show those that are deficient with, uh, you know, developers or whatever we need, whether they're technical writers, and then people can go, oh, this is something I can do. I didn't know that project needed some help. I'd love to be on that. And then we can link it to a chapter, so if you're in a certain region, and some kind of, be fabulous if we can get it to come together. Play nice, yeah. 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 Speaking yeah. of playing nice, I'm going to give it to Harold, because this is project time with Harold now. So say hi to Harold. Project time with Harold. Uh, project time hi, with Harold. Harold. Welcome, Noah. Good afternoon. Before we start with me, I don't know how many of you actually know Karen, but Karen is our executive director of OWASP. Um, so let's start with, you've heard most of this already, um, challenges for projects. Um, early on, probably late last year, we were migrating to a new version of our CRM, and that migration didn't quite go as expected. It uh, wasn't even complete at the end of that time. And so a lot of the time that we spent this year is getting that cleaned up and moving forward so that we can get the new projects into our system a lot easier. Um, we still have ongoing vendor, fix vendor fixes that cost me us money, taking our time. Vendors <laughs> 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 of time. Picking our hair. Yes. Um, and also last year we had lots of churn in the foundation itself. So we do have a lot, uh, a backlog of project issues, cases, hundreds of them. So some of the plans to fix some of this. One is to use Jira to handle new project requests, the project promotion um, requests. And what this will do um, by taking it out of the Salesforce would allow us, as Matt was talking about, tracking chapter type thing. This will allow us to track, hey, where is this at? We don't have to, you don't have to come to us to know where your project is at in this particular step. It will be in Jira where you can log in and look at it. Um, we also want to connect the information. Um, what that has to do with is providing APIs, using the APIs that are available to us to connect, say, our financial information to our wiki in the project area so that if you need your project funds, like how, how much money do I have? You don't have to wait on me. The, the, they'll be listed in the wiki. Um, one of the issues we have right now is that the funds are at least 30 days behind, at least. Sometimes it's 60. You may need your funds pretty quickly. I mean, if you're waiting on me and then I'm waiting on them, you're going to get them uh, in, not, in a not timely manner. Um, I'm going to do more project town halls. I don't know how many of you knew about the previous town hall we had in June, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> well, thanks, Steve. <laughs> he showed up. Um, we had two of them, and it was a little bit late, so some of that's on me, right? Uh, I think I told people about it maybe two weeks in advance. So for August, we're going to have another one. I will send that out way earlier than two weeks in advance, and we'll have more than two times. I had two times set up. One was for our time as far as our lunch time, and then the other time was around uh, 
six our time as well, because that would allow our people to come in at 6 p.m. and people in the UK would be at 6 p.m. on, on our 12 o'clock time. Um, and who all can attend the conference? Project leaders? Can and you uh, send it out to? I'd send it out to the OWASP leaders list. Can, can project members go as well? If they certainly could. There's no reason why closed. Closed. No, it's not a closed system. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things we want to do moving forward is also reintroduction of the project summits. I think uh, Martin was actually talking about that earlier, or maybe it was Sharif. Um, in doing this, we want to uh, take them separate from the big global conferences, make it so that they're more regional and focused on a handful of projects and not this huge spattering of projects. Um, we think that this will provide a breeding ground for new ideas, new projects, how to view the project differently, maybe integrate the projects a little bit better, like this project and this project are, we find out, hey, they can use each other and, uh, and bring their own projects forward. Um, we want to provide a place where you can get project services. You want, you need a tech writer? Okay, well you log into our system here, you look at the, um, what's available. This goes to what you were talking about, Ash. Um, we, you'd have a listing of, hey, I need translation services. So you know that you can go in and say, okay, I can provide that for this project. Um, we do have great projects that continue to come in. The mass project that Sharif brought us from Jeff Foley. It is a, how to put this, it basically looks at the network and does a reverse lookup on DNS subdomains and ends up turning it into something that looks like this, the network map. Yeah, so it, it gives you a good idea of what is actually running where. So you can do it both ways. You can give it a bunch of domains that you own, and it will just tell you where they are. But you can also do it the other way around, which is you say, OK, this is my data center, or these are my external IP ranges. What is running there? And it will go get it, uh, give it to you. But it will also put it in this uh, graph. This is Neo4j, which is a graph database. So you can actually query that and say, Rackspace, I don't know I had anything in Rackspace, just tell me all the domains that are actually resolving to Rackspace or something like that, and it will show it to you, so you just run this. Um, this isn't just a pretty visualization, this is actually a graph database. You can see the relationships and you can uh, ask some interesting questions, because now if you know that there are certain sites that you're covering from a security perspective, you can say, well, those I know, and those I'm actually you know, trying to protect. What else is out there uh, that I don't know about? And then you can actually have a differentiated view. And it's thorough, because it found cheesemonkey.owasp.org. <laughs> yes. Which is what I was using to test my Ansible to deploy um, uh, Let's Encrypt Search. And I figured, that's a crazy freaking name. Who would guess that? And it's still, it's a stale DNS record. But it found it. Yes, it also found one that I absolutely love, which is, uh, did you guys know that there's a short links.oasp? SL.oasp.org. Yes, SL. So <laughs> SL.oasp.org, if you want to put on Twitter or something a short link mm -hmm. that just still says OWASP, you can do that with that domain. Oh, that's cool. So that's how I found out about it. So uh, thanks, Amas, and also welcome to the team. Cool. I have a question about yeah. the last slide before you continue. Oh. Um, so you said that it would provide translation. So our project is planning videos where we're going to do things in the project and release them. And I was going to pay to caption them. If someone could help with translation, it'd be really cool to have it be available in multiple languages. I, I don't know what the cost is on that, though. Um, that's part of what we're going to be putting forward. Is not only would it, will it have people who are interested, but if they charge or if they provide their services for free, I personally have had a handful of requests from people who do translation services, uh, specifically Russian has been a big one, yeah. that want to do translation services for us. So it's not another place where you know, like, you want to be in Chinese, let's talk to a chapter in China, and maybe they'll translate for us, right? Yeah. You can also do that kind of connect thing. And the, the other thing we were talking about is the idea of having services that are either the foundation runs or services that we don't necessarily run, but we know other projects, chapters have used, and they're useful. Like mm -hmm. maybe we don't necessarily have a login or an account, but mm -hmm. you know this other 
project had the thing they needed done and they used the service and it was actually useful for them. Mm -hmm. So if you do find a service or something that's neat and useful, let us know and we'll add it to this list. Yeah. So then at least like as an, I, I now need translation and you've already been through this video pain and found out that Johnny's good and Sally's bad, so I'm gonna use Johnny, not Sally, or yeah. whatever the vendors are, right? We can actually sort of give the vendors a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a curated list of people that have been used and been successful with other right. endeavors. Yep, okay. And so I don't really wanna shoot myself in the foot for this, but uh, in the meantime, if you need something like that, you can send an email to me and I will try to do what I can to find something. That's just for Tanya. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. Anybody. <laughs> um, oh, we have a question in the back. Oh, that's it. Um, you mentioned project funds. Yes. Is that in addition to what Guinness and Co. have been doing? Or mm -hmm. is that combining what they're putting them back into the other fold? Or yeah. is that, how do you um, see that relationship working? I think that is something that is an ongoing conversation. Uh, we have not finalized anything on that. It might be separate. I can't. I can't give you an answer on that because it still hasn't been decided. Because yeah, one of the ideas we were kicking around was tie it to regional events, and if we're, you know, that would obviously not be part of the London summit thing that happened because, I mean, that that is a regional that event. But if we did it in Stoneprock or in Benelux or one of the other regional events or uh, at Sec IL, you know, whatever, if we tied it to one of those kind of events, um, it obviously would be a smaller sort of summit thing. But we don't know what that thing is. Yet. We just know we want to have more of them, and we're not exactly sure the shape of them. Yeah. I, I have Pardon? a question. Sorry. Um, no, uh, uh, when you can control so virtual summits, like that's uh, another that's another fine up. Yeah, that's a yeah. great example of another thing we can pursue. Absolutely. Yeah. So there is no problem to locations and compliance happening in London all the time sure. or somewhere mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Expenses and all the things. That yeah. is that is one of the things that I meant to mention about the previous project town hall. And Steve, whenever he did it then, he had all kinds of great ideas that you know, I've taken into account whenever I'm presenting the things here. So if you can manage to make one of the town halls and bring those ideas with you, we'd love to hear them. We do that with the, uh, we have our monthly uh, mm -hmm. connect and our global connect where our go to meeting or mm -hmm. WebEx. There you go. So that we all can meet up and share our ideas. Perfect. Um, so, uh, the DevSwap project is thinking about having our own summit, and because I work for Microsoft, that they would just give us a free space and everyone could just attend for free. Mm -hmm. um, and so, awesome. we would like to advertise whoever wants to come and could come. Um, sure. Um, I don't know what we want to do with. Because uh, maybe some tech companies would be okay with just giving us like one big room for a few days. Sure, right. Right? Mm -hmm. Especially if there's like an employee that works there that can like find the forms and be like, I'll make sure no one wrecks the place, sort of thing. Right, right. If you want to get that connected to the OWASP stuff, that's probably Kelly and Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, for like co marketing and, and the, the yep. yeah. it'd be almost like a, a partnership right. event. Yeah, because yeah, we yeah. want everyone who wants to come and just like yep. smash away with us. That's awesome. Um, speaking of the project, one of the more recent ones was the rebooted OWASP book, book project, which Sharif and Yay, Yay Becky! Yay. <laughs> put together. Um, they produced an ebook version of OWASP Spam. And correct me if any of these things be a little wrong. <laughs> it's a. Uh, and I took his notes and summarized it, so it's right. so <laughs> many chances of being wrong. So it's basically you, you take Markdown, you use various tools, and it eventually produces an ebook as the output. Um, what the end goal is to define the process to produce ebooks through, uh, let's say you have GitHub, you put down, you mark down in the GitHub, you put down a, a webhook mm -hmm. in GitHub that will run a tool to create your ebook. Yeah. yeah, so that's exactly it. So I'll give you an idea. Sam, just really quick. Sam, when I showed up and I asked him, can I see the artifact so we can update it? They basically said, here's a PDF. I said, no, 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 what's the, where it doesn't matter if it's a word doc or text or markdown. I said, no, no, it's a PDF. And they actually had to use Acrobat Writer to do SAM 1.5, and that's why it hasn't been updated for a while. So we then turned it into markdown so it's easy to be edited and you can turn it into web page things, whatever you want. Um, what we, well then we'll be able to create that process so it's easy to automate. If it's in markdown, then we can take it and so on. What 
the one challenge that we have right now to, to get it to a point where we put it into uh, work, um, sort of the, uh, the bookstores and so on, that's where we ultimately want to get to, is that uh, Markdown on its own doesn't have like a nice design to it, but the good news is you can put in C uh, CSS uh, into it. So one of the things that some of the books have asked is that we have a CSS template, um, not mandatory, but if someone chooses to use it, that it's available so that the tables look nice and the diagrams look a little bit uh, neater. So if we have that template, then we'll just introduce it and then basically hand it over to the foundation so that it just becomes a service in a box. Hey, we've just updated um, a, a document. We also now want to have it published in the book. And hand it to Harold, and that will be just streamlined. Yep. Can anyone write a book on something? Yeah. Another nice thing about Markdown, by the way, because I had the same issue when I was asked to set up Staff Member to update the OAuth bylaws. All I could find was PDFs of the recent bylaws, so I turned them into Markdown, and they're now on GitHub. And when I do updates, I actually do a, a commit into GitHub with the, you know, this happened in this board meeting, and that's the change. And I take the Markdown and convert it to PDF, and also convert it to MediaWiki tags, and put it in the wiki. Yeah. And one last nice little thing about Markdown is that even someone who isn't technical, like a, uh, a writer, can then use it. So uh, Becky, who is the, the writer that actually took it from PDF and so on, didn't know that much about it and wasn't necessarily the, the most technically proficient person. But when she showed up, she was like, uh, <laughs> what's going on here? And then sat down, here's Markdown, here's a um, you know, WYSIWYG editor for it. And she did what took about a year of planning in a day and a half to get it done. So JT. Looking for somebody who might know CSS, CSS design, so yeah, to help a, a web designer that doesn't mind working with books, so that we can finally publish Sans the top ten uh, as well, because we got Andrew at the last thing this week, and then package it up, and then anyone who wants to use that process can do that. So yeah, anyone who wants to play with style sheets to create like a template for other uh, books, please reach out to me, and um, I will. Uh, yeah, I'm um, looking forward to working with you. It's a pretty, hopefully a pretty straightforward process. Cool, thanks. Your point, yes, absolutely. Anybody who wants to write a appetite book, absolutely go ahead and do so. And you know, this would allow us to start selling books that aren't dated in 2013. Yeah, you know? that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Various things is left. There's Project Wiki space updates, um, donation processes. We want to start doing an automated thank you that basically sends it out to the person who donated to a particular project or chapter where they get a thank you. And then you're notified as the leaders of a project or chapter that these people gave you a donation. That allows you to go out and say, hey, thank you personally as well. I had a company donate from one of my projects and I didn't know until I have to look at the scoreboard trying to answer somebody else's question. I was like, oh crap, I got money. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's a fantastic update. Yeah. And this uh, recent donation thing would be something that the vision is that on your wiki page or project page, you would have a, a list that would actually list, here are the recent donations to your project. Um, project release and update information, we want to get more involved with getting out your project releases. Right now, the, the way to do that is not very well, um, not staff friendly, let's just put it that way. In the way it's currently done is typically somebody in Slack or on Twitter will make a statement about, hey, our project just did this. We unfortunately aren't able to monitor Slack <laughs> and Twitter and everything all the time. so. From our perspective, we don't know. We don't know until finally somebody lets us know. So we want to come up with a process by which when you do a release, that automatically, you don't have to do it, that will automatically go ahead and let us know that you've done a release. We and can tweet it, we can put it on Facebook, oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. We know about it. Another important thing, OWASP Connect can use that app. So yes. everyone exactly. can get updates yes, on the right. newsletter. Yep. Yeah, it's just, if we don't know about it, it we'll never occurred to me to tell you guys. <laughs> 
sponsored low cost, no cost cloud services, depending on say like your project level. Lightship might get a no cost cloud service. Where maybe ETA would have to pay a little, a small front um, fee there. And something that Steve mentioned was having a defect tracker pro post alert project with, and one of the, the things he brought up would like to see something better than this, but say issues in GitHub, because GitHub's where the source lives, would need to have an issue tracker as well. And for Defect Dojo, he's not in here. Very um, we actually have opened up Jira for them to start using that to start tracking things as an experiment. So it's possible that we can use our own Jira. Yeah, for Defect Dojo, I, I know this because I know the product as well. They actually have Jira integration, and they want a way to do CI/CD testing in terms of Jira integration open to bus. And we have a Jira account, so Defect Dojo wired into the Jira account so that they can actually do that testing without having to actually pull me up for a real Jira account. So now when their CI/CD runs after a commit, you know they can actually push stuff back and forth from Jira and make sure that the Jira stuff didn't break or whatever last two hours. And I think that is it for me. The rest is me. Get me again, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure. We'll find thank out. You, thank you, Harold. Thank you, Harold. Yes, welcome, Harold. Thank you for all the stuff you're doing with the project. As, as a project person, I think it's very cool. I've enjoyed it. I have a few other quick things, and then we'll, we will be done, I promise. Uh, website reboot. Haven't forgotten this. It may have been paused when I wasn't around, and things were chaotic. Oh, my gosh, um, really? It's happening. There's, oh, I haven't forgotten this. This has been a, a thorn in my side for ages. You're going to ruin me. my joke, though, about, like, have you seen our Wiki 1994 calls and they want our, their website back. Yeah, my daughter was like, oh, you're Wikipedia. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't work for Wikipedia. Yeah, no, Harold has been doing so good. And I. this is why I haven't done it, because if you've seen any kind of stylistic thing I've done, you're looking at it like it ain't pretty. Um, Harold is much better at UI and graphics than me, and, and he has patience for it than I don't. He's been POCing a lot of different changes to make the, the, the style side of the wiki much better. I have a meeting next week with a consultant or a contractor that we're considering hiring who understands media wiki uh, content organization side of things, like categories and how to actually make sanity in the organization of the insanity that is our spaghetti wiki. Well, um, I'm interrupting right there because yeah. I do want to point out the fact that I did put in making ugly less ugly because there's nothing you can do to <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're also, I mean, one of the, I'm looking at a bunch of different things, and there's a, there's some possibility of switching out our CRM system, and that CRM system has a way to front it with a, like a public, a much more public general website. So maybe we front the wiki with a more public website-y thing. I don't really know, um, but all options are open, because what we have now doesn't. I mean, it, it works because it answers on board 443 and 80, um, but that's about where the, the excitement ends. <laughs> Um, so we will make this better. It, we know it's not awesome. Um, which, oh, I was gonna show you one example of this as I was playing around. Good job. Can I drive over my back? Oh, uh, did I get the wrong link in here? No, I didn't. So I was playing around uh, last, this was, what, what did I figure, June? of 2017, before things went crazy, before Kate and Allison left and my life went sideways. Um, I was playing around with actually using categories properly and chunking the information in the wiki based on a usage case. So if you're interested in OWASP projects, here's things. If you're interested in contributing, 
here's things. If you want to actually, if you're a leader, here's things. Because right now we have this gigantic tab, tabified mess that's the project page that I can't find crap in it, and I've been doing projects since 2008. God help somebody who's just new to OWASP and trying to find something. So this is like conceptually what we wanted to do. And if you, if you look at it, if you do categories correctly, you can do interesting things, like have auto drop downs of like all the flagships. This isn't actually accurate. I only have two. But like this is, you can actually do these auto generated lists of projects on places because they're categorized correctly. Right now though, there's projects, project, OWASP project, OWASP projects. Categories. <laughs> we actually have over 500 categories in the wiki right now. It's, it's insane. And so the other nice thing is if we can get the structure sane, we can do automation. Like if a new category gets created and we don't know about it, like what the heck? Let's go look. Did somebody get creative when they made a wiki page? Do we need to go fix that? Do we need to do a little maybe education of a new chapter leader who added a weird tag and it didn't work like they thought? Like we can't do that now because it's just spaghetti as it is. So if we can get here, we can actually start moving forward. Um, and the other one that, that was brought up earlier, this course. Yay! I'm killing Mailman. I hate Mailman. Yay! Mailman is a fan of my existence. It's awful. I want it to die. <laughs> Love Mailman. No, it's awful. I mean, it's, it's awful to admin. It's awful in terms of features. It's way the heck out of date. Um, it just needs to go away. And I want that to be discourse. I wanted that to be discourse before, and I just never got to it, and now we'll do it. I mean, for no other reason, we're trying to migrate off of the host on which this lives, and it has to go somewhere. So my, my plan is to take a sort of static uh, snapshot of all of the archives of old lists. We'll put that on a static web server, and it can just sit there so that we still have Google poo. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, we'll migrate everything to Discord. Yeah, so one note on that, because a lot of people, if you have any of the emails start, uh, stuck inside the queue, so go back to that, right? So just email to help, right? And you'll be able to release the email from the queue and say, he helped Actually, our chapter a couple of times. But yeah. yeah, so mailman has to go while it's still there. If you have problems, just email. Actually, I would put it on contact us because Harold or I can do it, and that way Don can get it to whoever's free. That's a better way to get it, because either one of us can do that. Just to unstick it every once in a while they get caught. Because guess what? Like sometimes people as talking about like attacking web apps get categorized as hacking. It's really weird, <laughs> right? And so you're like, oh, okay, fine. I know this guy, he's a leader. He's talking about this weird exploit thingy and you know, Barracuda lost its mind and said it was awful, which it would be if it was a corporate network, but it isn't, so fine, let it go. And by the way, bless this guy that's in going forward, right? We can do that stuff. Yeah. That's easy. So is, is there a plan to migrate the mail list or to, how would you manage the mailing list if you have? The, the plan is to ask the owners of the mail list. Mm -hmm. Well, and we have, 900 and some odd mail lists. Uh, I think it was, I don't remember, it's been about a year since I did the numbers, but I think it was roughly 15% of those actually had had a post within a year. So we have loads of crust. But those that are actually active, and my, my definition of active is you've had a post within a year, which is a pretty loose definition of active. I will ask the owners, is this thing worth keeping? And if they say yes, we'll take the list of people that are on uh, mailman and email them and say, hey, this thing is going away. If you want to, we here's a link. Go add yourself to Discord. Because I don't want to force subscribe them to Discord, but I want to give them the option. So and it's for the uh, members. It's for everybody. The other thing that I, I, I like Slack. I think Slack is pretty cool. But the other thing that's really unfortunate about Slack is that it's not indexed by group. And so if you answer a really cool thing about how to fix something in Java mm -hmm. on a mail list, at least that was indexed by Google. Yeah. But that's not in Slack. So like yeah. OWASP has a lot of good advice that gets hidden in Slack. So let's unhide it by putting it on Discourse. That's cool. kind of one of the my main thrusts about Discourse. What is the question? When, when are you estimating that we can use this cool thing that we've been waiting for? It'll be this fall at the earliest because I have this and I have okay. a whole bunch of hoo-ha that has to happen between now and August. And then okay. in August, um, me and my two kids are in an international karate tournament in London again. Yay! Yeah. And then after I get back, that's when I start thinking about this. Cool. Yeah, so it's soonish, but it's not <laughs> <laughs> next week. You can put out a poll for volunteers. Maybe people will help you. Okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> well, and the nice thing about the other nice thing about not Discord. Not with the karate tournament, with Discord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aw. I have like a whole herd of people go chop people up. It's from Moab? Yeah. <laughs> We're like well, the, the other nice thing with, honestly, from a, just a functional operational point of view is I can SAS 
discourse. Yeah. I can pay the discourse people X dollars and they just run the thing. And they handle the thing. All the time. I SAS all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I love the fact that like operationally I don't have to go and patch the OS and oh there's an update and like no, we just give you some money and this thing stays current. Yeah. Did we contact them for sponsorship option? Like if they can sponsor I didn't time. before, but we never went real with it. We tested it, and I had thrown up a couple Docker versions of it to play around and make sure it was cool. No, I was asking about SaaS capability. Like they are offering for, I mean, they have some discount for charity organization. Yep. But did we try to? I mean, if they can sponsor us, like. I didn't because I got my. I guess my point was talking about Docker was I got to the point where I realized I tried it and this will work, and then I never got beyond the like, hey, let's talk to them and see. Okay. Did you see what I'm saying? That was one of my next steps to, because, yeah, I love playing the charity card. Hey, we're a charity. Like, give us free stuff. Like, yeah, why not? They but definitely interesting. It, well, I mean, if they say no, we're no worse off. And if they say yes, like, awesome. Yeah, totally. No, I, I will ask. I mean, it's, it will be difficult for us to maintain the servers, patch, update, and all the things. No, I don't. SAS, the staff don't need to spend time for that activity. They will do it, like, uh, you know, they just need to use the service. Yep, yep. Totally, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get everything as, uh, as much as I can not run by people in the foundation. Because I would much rather help you guys, which is a much more unique skill set than just paying somebody some money and let them run a server. That's kind of commodity right now. Um, okay, that's done. Can I just add one more thing then? Yeah. So uh, since we're going to be using Meetup Pro, so the Meetup has a built-in like a mailing list facility for the local members. Okay. So a lot of people just use Meetup to inform uh, the uh, local chapter members about yep. Meetup. Um, and they don't use mailing list because mailman is rubbish. So is I there any way to kind of integrate with, because you mentioned the cool automation with Meetup Pro, yep. to actually get the, uh, the mailing list from Meetup somehow integrate with this course so we don't have to be posted? Yeah, yeah. I don't know of an existing thing that does that. They both have APIs that are fairly sane, so it may exist as a, either a, an add-on, a pay, or a community thing, or we could write it. But I don't know of it ex explicitly existing today. And I, but nor did I research it, to be I honest. I think the next quarter we can mail to them, but I don't know if they can. Yeah, we'd have That's to see. That's a great idea. But that could be, uh, you know, get some students to knock up a POC. We give them a Docker image and some uh, meetup account that's bogus and let them try to migrate it. And if it works, then we do it for realty on the real server. Yeah, because this way we we'll only have to publish stuff in the mailing list once. And if it is discourse, they publish once and it automatically goes to our meetup for meetup. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Well, we can just ask a volunteer. Like, yeah, that's that what we did with our thing. I just said, like, I really want to do this thing. Will anyone help me? And a whole bunch of people volunteered. Sure, but if we can use computers and automation, then that's... No, 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 computer, no, no. They had, so oh, you mean you write, write it. Plug so yeah, the, the plugin for MediaWiz was written yeah. by volunteers. Yeah, no, okay. so I just had we to test it. just found there is a plugin for this course, which does uh, meet up with this. Okay, so okay, high perfect. five. Yeah, the uh, there's, there's a load <laughs> of integrations with this course. I just didn't know if there was any this one. that to us or something? I think it's the best idea to share the cool things that the different chapters have on the chapter's mailing list so that the other people can also... Yeah. Could benefit it, I, would say too. I would really love yeah. to hear what other chapters Thank are you. doing that's yeah. cool. Because we were talking and we're both like, oh, that's cool, yeah. that's cool, that's cool. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. Having a monthly chapter leader meeting, yeah. right, mm -hmm. where I go to meeting, I think is paramount important because mm -hmm. it kind of stopped happening. And mm -hmm. uh, Harold mentioned it's going to be restarted. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I think we'll probably need two different time zones because of uh, <laughs> different countries. Mm -hmm. At least two. And, and out. Outcomes to be published yeah. and presentations yeah. to be published. So if any chapter has any cool idea, that needs to be shared so it's shared mm -hmm. on the uh, mailing list. Yep. Yeah. And just some last operational things. Um, oh, I'm in the middle of migrating. This is the thing that's going to happen when this uh, is done and before I start karate chopping people. Uh, migrating off a higher cost used to be donated but isn't any more host to a less expensive host because we're spending way too much money uh, with this current host. Um, I'm also retiring a bunch of past WordPress sites that were used for conferences, and I'm staticifying them and shooting them in the head and then leaving them on a static site. Because we actually have AppSec USA going all the way back to 2005. Was that it? Was that 2005 or before? Like, we have all those sites, like 2005.appsecusa.org uh, and all of the old EUs. Like, all of those sites still answer on domains, and I've been moving them all to static. And so I, I kind of hated to just turn them off. Um, so they all, I found a nice way to turn WordPress into static and they're all being staticified. And then for the stuff I'm doing, I have written some Ansible to both handle these migrations and also redirects. So um, 
Like for this conference, AppSec EU, if you just type in AppSec EU, right, it redirects you to AppSec 2018 AppSec EU, right? Next year we'll do 2019. That's an Ansible script that I wrote that just goes and answers 443 and um, 80, and 80 redirects to 443, and 443 is covered by a um, Let's Encrypt cert, so it costs us nothing, and we get TLS forwarding to the right place. Like all that's automated now. Fantastic. Um, we're using Hootsuite to better handle social management. We just restarted using Hootsuite, so now we can. Currently, it has Facebook groups, pages, uh, US Twitter, uh, or the OWASP Twitter, AppSec EU Twitter, and LinkedIn are, are, are all in there. So we can post and schedule things and make that much Oops. nicer. Um, and then just staff upgrades, which is in, sounded kind of inside ball, but just so if you see this, you understand what's happening. I set up a domain, OWASPfoundation.org, and we're going to migrate all staff onto that email address so that you can tell the difference between a staff person and just an OWASP member. Yes, and right, for identity things, when you leave, we just turn this off and there's no kind of weirdness because that's also your community address, right? Like for me, that would be a problem. Yeah. Good that's good that's good 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 good. With my own list, uh, Matt, so a lot of people complain when they become OWASP members, they don't, uh, they have to apply to get an OWASP.org email address. Yep. Can we please automate that process? So when someone becomes a paid member, they get the yep. automatically. There's some there's some CRM things we have to get lined up first, but yes, that's definitely on the to-do list. Yeah, that's it's kind of and, and honestly, like selfishly from a staff perspective, that's a dumb thing that I could automate. Why would I want Dawn to have to answer an email and automate it? Like that's that's a waste of her time, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, there, but we have to like we said, clean house and that stuff can happen. Do you ever think we have to test the factor? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And then finally, uh, we're rolling out LastPass across the staff. So we Yay. have password management across all of our staff. Yay, Yay. for big security. I know, it's crazy. It's are, are, are we going to find a new solution for emailing the discount code for all of that? Oh, yeah. uh, there is, actually. Actually, yeah. the discount code is going to die in San Jose because we have wired in the CRM to the registration so it knows that you're a leader. And it doesn't have to ask you for a code. And if you Yay. try to BS the code, we'll go, hey, hey, that's cute, and not give you a discount. Score! Yes. Yay. We've known about that problem for a long time, and we just finally got the CRM into a place job. where we can do that. Yeah. Good job. Well, it's dumb. It's dumb to email out that code. Because we know who you are. And that's one nice thing, too. We, we had done some POC work on connecting the sort of uh, tags, for lack of a better word. We give you, like, leader, uh, member, and whatever in CRM, like these kind of things. Um, in CRM to discourse. So when you're in discourse and you create a profile, we can say, hey, member badge, leader badge, you know, whatever. We can actually attach those to so, you. Yeah, I've got a volunteer badge, but not the leader one. Oh, I meant, I meant the, the, well, this is, I'm using uh, discourse speak. Yeah. Discourse speak calls badges like achievements. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so you can, when you log in, your profile would say, okay. here's you, and by the way, you're a leader, and you're also a chapter member, and you're in the WE Award, or whatever. Those kind of things that are in our CM, we can actually surface in discourse, mm -hmm. which is another really cool reason to have it. Because then, like, being a member, it's very public about it. Like, yeah. this guy who answered my question, mm -hmm. he's not just some random Joe who has a discourse account. Mm -hmm. He's actually a, oh, he's a project leader, and he's a member of OWASP, right. and he's a, a MUIA, whatever, yeah. like, done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, that is very cool. I can't wait to get this stuff done. Good work. Yeah. Yes, and I think, oh, nope, more ops. Oh. <laughs> That's boring. Amazon Business Account for Foundation staff, ours kept getting locked. When you buy a whole bunch of different denominated European currency Amazon gift certificates from America, you get locked out of Amazon. It's the weirdest thing. You're like, stop giving us all this <laughs> money. <laughs> we already have too much, please. Oh, true. And by the way, speaking of Amazon, smile.amazon.com, we're a charity. I'm hooked up with my smile to OWASP. I've donated, I don't know how many, 200, 300 bucks, I don't remember. Oh, could you tweet that and I'll reshare yeah, it to all my friends? It's available on Smile. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. maybe we should start a little tweet storm about it. We should. Because yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that'd be a yeah. good announcement. Yeah. 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 Even if you're not a member. Yeah, it's, yeah it gives us cash. And That's great. Speaking of Amazon, is there any plan to put any of our merchandise on Amazon? And just Books, it? yes. Merchandise, not yet. Merchandise is still a bit of a mess, honestly. We need to get providers in, in regions, and then we can mm -hmm. probably make that happen. Um, I've been playing around with Zephyr, or Zephyr, uh, Zephyr, I don't know how you say that, whatever, for a playing around with Zephyr, Zephyr, yeah. whatever the thing is, for process automation, which is really pretty cool, where like, I get an email, and I give it a tag in Gmail, and it automatically drops it into a card in Trello, and yada, 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 like, done. Like, all that kind of stuff you can do with Zephyr, it's pretty sweet. I'm reviewing GoToMeeting, 
I'm not going to switch it. Do you have a question before I go no. to go to meeting? Go ahead and then I'll ask. You. Okay. I'm looking at alternatives to go to meeting just because we haven't like looked at that in years and I know there's a lot of options and I'm not even sure if those options are better, worse, different or less or more expensive, but I want to kind of look at that and see if there's something better we can use. Um, yes, for go to meeting you can only have 26 members, not more than that. Yeah, that's a problem. We have the go to webinar thing, um, an account, but it's kind of a mess. Um, and that's one of the things that's motivating to look for an alternative. Yeah, because they're, they're, that kind of issue has hit us yeah. in a couple cases. Yep. What about Zoom or Skype? Zoom is on my short list. I hadn't thought about Skype. Skype could be on my short list. I, I just have a, a diverse like a, a team that's all across the world, and there's 60 of us, and we have team meetings, and we use Zoom or Skype. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've used Zoom at past employers, and it was fantastic. Yeah, so that's one of them on my short list. Um, I'm looking at a platform, and, and I don't. I've looked at several platforms. I'm trying to find a platform to handle non-global app sites. So if you're doing a regional event and you need a calendar and registration and a web page and see a uh, call for papers, I'm, I've looked at a couple platforms that handle kind of all of the junk around holding a regional event in one place. And you can put it on os.org domain and you can go there and all of the events will happen in that place. Um, so that we don't have like 50,000 different event systems because that's sort of what we have now that's a pain. And it's just easy. If you want to handle an event, like it's just right here, and go. And the ones I've looked at, I can actually delegate your event to the event team, but it's still sort of foundation, you know, globally controlled, and we handle billing and the uh, the payment flow and all that other junk. Um, oh, and then yeah, our current event insurance provider is less than stellar, and we're trying to find a new one. So if we're slow getting you insur uh, event insurance, that's why they're not particularly responsive to be nice. So question yes. on event uh, system, uh, Matt. Uh, there were a lot of complaints about Reg Online. Mm -hmm. because a lot of people found it confusing to register for AppSec EU. Yep. And with the whole payment processing uh, as well, uh, people didn't know where to put the codes. And uh, any plans to replace the payment system and switch from Reg Online to something else? Uh, I would consider the payment system not what you see, but what shuttles the money around. But yes, the front end, yes, we're okay. looking at one. We'll use a totally different one for um, yes, Jose. Because Reg Online, yeah, I agree. It wasn't fantastic. Even as like I've been doing events at OWASP forever, and I was like, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I know that was suboptimal UI, but that was the best we could get in the time frame. And definitely looking at replacements. And it doesn't Reg Online doesn't understand our CRM, which is one of the other problems. Like we don't know you're a, a leader, which is yeah, not suboptimal. So works to double check. Right? Yeah, Dawn is going in quite honestly and double checking people who put in a leader code to make sure they're really a leader, which is bunk. I want her doing much more high value work than you know, going, yep, yep, these people are. Cool, and that's, I think that's all I got. Yep, that's all, folks. And I don't know if it was stated at the very beginning, but uh, in case you haven't noticed, Matt is back. Yay. <laughs> yep, I'm back. It's great to be back. Well, we're all very sad when you announced it. Leaving all us, but that was a yeah, you know, I just had to have a, a bit of a break. Yeah, I had to have a little adventure and then come back. Honestly, I, 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 yeah, I told, I told, uh, oh, I've told a lot of people this. I'll tell you this. Like, I think if Karen had showed up a couple weeks before she did, I probably wouldn't have, because basically what happened was one of them said, "Hey, we're hot for it," and I went, mm, "I'm kind of grumpy right now, I'm doing a lot of crap that I don't want to, and it seems chaotic." And yeah, that sounds better. Um, but I was very, very happy to come back. Because I, I bumped into Karen at uh, Snowfrock, where I was speaking, and talked to her, and really was super excited about what she wants to do with the award. So, very, very happy to come back. Can I suggest that we all give the OWASP staff a big round of applause, and we don't forget to thank them regularly for all the amazing work they do for us. Awesome. I'm going to push stop record, so then we can talk frankly. Oh, yeah. Let's use four-letter words. Help. Four-letter words. Yes. And apparently I need to, I need to figure out streaming because it didn't work. <laughs>